If you're sensitive to flashing images, I'd give this entire video a miss because it's full of them. Hello there, I'm Gav. In this video, we'll be learning how a 3D TV works using the help of slow motion as usual, specifically the kind that use these active shutter 3D glasses. I should probably start saying how this is how a 3D TV worked <laughs> because they're now relics of the past. This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. I'll tell you more about them at the end. Before we look at the TV specifically, let's just go over the basics of what is actually going on when you watch a 3D movie. When watching content, the illusion of 3D is achieved by showing two different perspectives, one to each eye. This process is usually started in the camera, either by using a special 3D camera with two lenses or by using two cameras side by side to mimic the positions of two human eyeballs. For our VR 180 series on Oculus, for our regular speed footage, we used a camera with two lenses. And then for the slow-mo, we just used two phantoms side by side. Now the phantoms are actually physically too big to get that close together, especially once the lenses were on. So we used this special mirror rig, one camera looking through a mirror and one looking off the reflection of the mirror. And this allowed the phantoms to effectively phase through each other, giving the correct interocular distance. From experience, I can tell you that this method introduces a lot of extra cost and a lot of extra time needed <laughs> to complete the shoot. I also wouldn't recommend handheld shots with this setup. So now we have our two different perspectives, left and right eye. The next challenge is only showing the correct perspective to each eye. In a VR headset, it's actually quite simple. You just have each eye look at a different screen or look through a different lens looking at different areas on the same screen. I won't go into too much detail about the other methods, there's great videos online already, but in a movie theatre you would typically project both perspectives using differently polarised light and then unpowered glasses would filter those correctly into each eye. You can also use anaglyph which typically uses red and blue filtering to show each perspective to each eye. We actually use this out in the field just to make sure our footage was looking correct before we could properly get it into post-production. But it is a pretty ugly way to view 3D content because the colors are just all over the place. That brings us onto this TV. It's actually a plasma 3D TV, which I bought secondhand off Craigslist. It's not in great condition. There's all kinds of mess happening on the left side of the screen and the stand is taped on with a bit of gaffer, but it should perform just fine for this demo. The reason I went for plasma is that we can actually get a bit of a double whammy here. I've shown how CRT screens work, OLED screens work, and how regular LED LCD screens work. Never had a plasma TV before, and the way they work is slightly different. Like an OLED TV, each pixel is self-emissive. They don't need a backlight, but they refresh the screen in multiple pulses per frame. The entire screen can't be lit at full brightness. So it ends up doing very short duration pulses of different information in the frame. Persistence of vision in your brain causes you just to see the complete image. This is known as the subfield drive, which often occurs up to 10 times per frame. And the pulses seem to last slightly different lengths depending on where they are in building the frame. Here I've stacked the results of each individual pulse. Without even realizing it, your brain will have stitched all of these together, creating what looks like just a normal frame of a movie. Based on what we're seeing here, this plasma TV probably would have been advertised as a 480 hertz display, but that doesn't mean it's capable of displaying 480 frames per second. It just means that it's a 60 hertz display with eight pulses per frame. So the way this differs from an OLED or an LCD TV is that in slow motion, you can't actually see the entire frame at once. So now if we switch to 3D mode to the human eye without glasses on, it looks like both perspectives are just blurred over each other. However, if I turn up my shutter speed on this camera, removing a lot of the motion blur, you can see that they're not just stationary sat over each other. It's flicking back and forth very quickly. So now we know that once the TV has completed building out one frame, it then switches perspective to the other eye and builds the same frame from that perspective. This is where the active shutter glasses come in and their job is to make sure your left eye only sees the left frame and your right eye only sees the right frame. And it does it by doing this. Using a battery inside to power liquid crystal technology inside each lens, very similar to what you would find in an LCD TV. It switches back and forth, blocking the vision from each eye. 
This will happen 60 times per second per eye. That's 120 switches per second. Even on films, they're only playing back at 24 frames a second. Looking through the glasses here in 3D mode, slowed down to 20,000 frames per second, we can see that the TV now only has the capability to pulse three times per eye for a total of six. And I assume the remaining two pulses are used to switch between left and right eye. Well, there we have it. I honestly think that's such an interesting way to show a different image to each eye because the concept is so simple. It's really just using technology to perform advanced winking. It honestly makes me a little bit sad that the technology has been abandoned for new TVs because you can get such big TVs now for so much cheaper than they were back when this technology was being used. And this makes more sense to me to have on a much bigger screen, otherwise it kind of looks like you're watching a film in a box that's like a foot deep. It doesn't make as much sense to me on a small screen. Yeah, I never had one. I guess I'm a part of the reason they went away because I never bought a 3D TV. This video was sponsored by KiwiCo. Very happy to have them back as a returning sponsor to our videos. They create fantastic projects and toys for kids designed to introduce them to science, maths, art, engineering. This is a Eureka crate, so please enjoy some footage of me building some headphones. KiwiCo have a campaign known as Small Today, Big Tomorrow. The idea being that small lessons today can mean much bigger, world-changing ideas in the future. So by teaching the skills of innovation, creativity, problem solving today, will help them get a head start bettering the world in the future. I've done several of these crates now, and my favorite thing about them is that everything you need is in the box. No need to go to the store, you just plop down a crate, open it up and get going. And it's very satisfying not having to rummage around for extra things. If you would like to support KiwiCo and the Slow Mo Guys channel, you can get 50% off your first crate. That's any of the crates by going to kiwico.com slash slowmoguys50 for 50% off. If you found this video interesting, feel free to slop a like on it. And if you like Slow Mo in general, make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.